and I wanted to update you. This is a very uh, happy day for me, as you know. The Israeli government is about to be sworn in at the parliament in just a few minutes. I'll wait uh, to see that you guys connect um, so we can uh, give, I can give you a very interesting update on what is the first thing that Benjamin Netanyahu said that his government is going to do. So uh, again, let's uh, wait for you to connect. I mean, here in Galilee in three days, I'm leaving to um, Singapore, Vietnam, Philippines, and California. Very long, very grueling speaking tour. Give you an update on situation in Singapore because uh, we have some hiccups with the government there, but um, I'll update you in a few seconds. And of course, um, what I want to tell you is that, um, see, I'm, I'm watching the news right now while I'm talking to you. Let me see if I can show you. There you go. See, I'm watching the news. Um, and that's, of course, because we are all waiting for the Israeli government to be sworn in at the Knesset, the parliament in Jerusalem. So, again, breaking news. The 37th government of Israel is about to be, to be sworn in. 37 governments in 74 years tells you that uh, we don't have a track record of keeping four years per government. If anything, it's two years. Um, but again, we all remember the last government was there for a year and a half exactly with two prime ministers of each and one of them was breaking his, the predecessor's uh, record of the shortest term as prime minister. It was a fiasco and a, some sort of a nightmare and bad, bad, bad dream um, that uh, we had to deal with, um, with the, the Muslim Brotherhood, all the left, the liberal progressive left, everybody colluded against the Netanyahu and, uh, of course, the uh, uh, conservatives here in Israel, which, by the way, are the majority. Uh, so, um, finally, thankfully, after a successful elections where Netanyahu secured 64 seats out of the 120, which means solid coalition, um, finally, it took him... Um, nearly two months to form the government because uh, although we're talking about only five or six political parties that he formed the government uh, with all of them wanted this government to not just warm their seats but to actually do stuff and do and make some major changes in israel especially in the judicial system but also in the in the way the deep state is handling this con this country in security and, and also in the media and everything. So the media is so outrageous. Uh, I mean, it, excuse me, outraged uh, by what is happening. Um, the LGBTQ is uh, protesting all across the country. The um, All the elites are now telling the Israelis that this is the end of democracy. This is the end. You see, because they are the ministers of truth. Unless they say it, it's not true. And unless they are in the government, it's the end of democracy. They just forget that the essence of democracy is that the majority rules. And the majority is about to rule. This is it. Now, um, for, for everyone that is watching right now, and if you're following me on um, on Telegram, folks, listen, Telegram is the most important vehicle of information of myself and many others in the future. Get Telegram, find my channel, Amir Salfati. It's about 318,000 subscribers. And people ask me, why do you have to say the numbers? I have to say the numbers because there's so many fake channels using my name. And they have a few hundreds or few thousands of people really think that they're following me there. 
but somebody is just taking them for a ride. So follow me, and because I'm sharing their information that I cannot share on YouTube and Facebook. You see, this is why you want to subscribe. It's free of charge. It's just an app, and it will give you the best information 24-7. Telegram. Find Amir Tsafati there. Now watch this. The first thing that Netanyahu said today is, listen to this. Israel will put an end to Iran's nuclear arsenal. Okay, I don't know if uh, I don't know if you understand what Netanyahu just said. And then he said another thing: Israel is going to have a normalization with Saudi Arabia. Two things, by the way, the two are connected because Saudi Arabia is counting on Israel to stop the Iranian nuclear program, not on America, not on Europe. But on Israel. So in return, the Saudis, which is Sheba and Didan in Ezekiel 38, the Saudis probably will go and uh, be added to the Abraham Accords and be part of the countries that have normalization with Israel. Folks, ever since the UAE has normalization with Israel, the business between the two countries is just skyrocketing. Israelis are make, doing a lot of business in Dubai and in and, and, and Abu Dhabi and vice versa. This is one of the best things that ever happened to the UAE. And same goes with Morocco as well. We are helping the Moroccans in intelligence, and military. We're helping them with agriculture. Folks, they, they all benefit from it. And the Saudis know that. And uh, now that the crown prince is also the prime minister and you know the, the king king salman is is really about to kick the bucket very soon uh, it's time for netanyahu to complete what he wanted to do a year and a half two years ago but he couldn't because of the political um instability in israel folks two things netanyahu is vowing to eliminate the iranian nuclear program and netanyahu is vowing to have normalization with Saudi Arabia. Apart from all the different um, the different challenges here in Israel to fight the deep state and to fight the progressive liberals and the brainwashing of the LGBTQ uh, agenda here in the media all around. I mean, the only people that are demonstrating right now across Israel at the moment are the LGBTQ. But the funny thing is the speaker of the parliament is a member of their community. And he is a member of the Likud party as well. So uh, all I'm trying to say is that um, this is a very interesting day. We are going to watch the uh, inauguration of the government of Israel, the 37th government, Benjamin Netanyahu, as of probably 30 minutes from now, will no longer be called prime minister elect or prime minister designate. Finally, he's back prime minister. And it's interesting because they replaced him in 2021. And he's replacing them in 2022, still in 2022. So in a way, for the last 16 years, Netanyahu was prime minister in every single year. Very interesting. There's so much to tell you about what's going to happen. What's go I mean, uh, it's quite remarkable, but I just wanted to give you an update. Listen, please do me a favor, share this video. Uh, again, as I said to you, we were told, we I did not, I thought we were being shadow banned and restricted. But uh, when we looked at the, at the, at the, um, uh, the metrics, we realized that the, one of the reasons uh, uh, you know, people have, I mean, Christian channels have low numbers is because Christians normally tend not to share. Um, they are afraid to harass their family or friends. Guys, don't be afraid. In the next days and weeks and months, this world is going to go through so much chaos that trust me, when you share with them things of life and things of wisdom and things of uh, you know, eternal life and, and salvation, that's the only thing that matters. So don't feel uncomfortable. Don't feel 
a little bit, um, you know, embarrassed to share things. Share as much as you can. So click the share button. All of you can become the best evangelist ever just by clicking one button. Share it with one person, maybe two, and you'll see how we can make great changes. So again, the 37th government headed by Netanyahu will be sworn in in just a few minutes. And the two things that Netanyahu already said is, my major task is to eliminate the Iranian nuclear arsenal. And second, bring peace or at least normalization with Saudi Arabia. Both play significantly into Bible prophecy. And uh, we will look at it later on. And for those of you who think that uh, the world is done with COVID, and you know I'm not talking about COVID. I try not to because it's, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, I guess, a waste of time. Everybody's already in his own opinion. But America and Italy, and now the rest of the Europeans are going to restrict Chinese from entering the country by demanding from them COVID tests, something that the whole world already dropped months ago. It seems like, uh, and if you watched my update from a few days ago, you know that there's, uh, there's uh, 250 million infected Chinese with COVID. And, and uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, just like in 2020, when the Chinese government allowed everyone to get on planes and fly everywhere, the first case was in Bordeaux, France, and then in Milan, Italy, and that's how all of them were Chinese people. Uh, arriving in that area. Just like then, right now, the same thing. Two planes landed in Milan, Italy from China two days ago. Over 50% of their passengers were COVID positive. Uh, you can say whatever you want, whether it's uh, on purpose or not. I'm not getting into it. I'm just stating a fact. This is why Italy said enough is enough. If you're coming from China, you have to show negative test result. America from January 5th will also dem demand that. And just when we thought that it's gone, it might come back. And this time, China dropped all restrictions. So China says, oh, what do you want from us? All restrictions are dropped. We, the zero COVID policy is abolished. We pivoted towards now opening everything. Everything is open. So our airports are open. Flights everything so that's that's what we do so pay attention to that as 2023 enter just like 2020 with some interesting things coming from china to the rest of the world also um i want you to know that um the situation in ukraine is escalating big time um because of some uh attacks of the ukrainians on the heavy bombers base called Engels II in the depth of the Russian territory, northeast of Ukraine. Uh, the Russians today attacked from the Black Sea with over 120 cruise missiles. The city of Lviv, which is the big Ukrainian city in western Ukraine, is almost without electricity completely. And the Ukrainians re responded with their own attack. Now, the New York Times just, just uh, reported that uh, the U.S. is assisting the Ukrainians uh, by telling them where to attack in Russia or in occupied territories by Russia, where to attack facilities where drones, suicide drones, are flying from. Very interesting because today, some of those suicide drones actually flew from Belarus. Belarus is now not only a country next to Ukraine, but it's a launching pad of attacks from, on Ukraine. The Ukrainians released some S-300 air defense system missiles. One of the projectiles landed in Belarusian territory and everything is escalating. And Putin understand that he cannot lose here and he's already telling the world that he has nuclear power. 2023, interesting year ahead of us. And, you know, just so you know, 
we need to be stronger in our faith and uh, in, in our walk with the Lord. And, and may I say, look, I, uh, on Telegram, I enabled the comments. And, oh my goodness, the, so much there that I see that people are fed by mostly YouTube and not by the Bible. So I hope that in 2023, your main source of understanding the plan of God is the Word of God. <laughs> Don't fall into the trap of sensationalism that comes in the shape of YouTubes. Do me a favor, okay? Thank you. Click on the share button. I'll give you more updates if there are any. The 37th government of Israel is being sworn in right now. Netanyahu's first thing that he said this morning is, my main goal is to eliminate the Iranian nuclear arsenal. And I will work hard for a normalization agreement with Saudi Arabia. It is within reach. Trust me. It could have happened if Israel had, you know, a better government in the last year and a half. But of course, it didn't. Everybody see what is going on in Iran. The protest continues. The Iranian Rial is now plunging even deeper. And uh, may I say, this is very important. Um, may I say that uh, the Iranians are, are very much uh, concerned about the new government in Israel. Very much concerned about the new government in Israel. Um, and the Iranians began to enrich uranium to 90%. We know that. I've said that here many times. Finally, Israeli officials from the Mossad and other places agree and uh, admit that this is the case. And this is something that is not only concerning uh, Israel, but it concerns Saudi Arabia. So, again, we are going to see a lot of interesting things happening in the near future between Israel and Saudi Arabia. And, of course, expect something big that might uh, happen to Iran in the near future. All right, guys, press the share button. Thank you. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.